Good morning. Thanks, Mark. Have you ever felt you haven't had the confidence to do something? Mark has been asking me for a long time now about getting up and preaching. And every time he would mention it, I had all these insecurities and feelings of self-doubt. Who am I to stand up and preach from the front? What have I got to share with everyone? Who would want to listen to me? I, thank you. <laughs> I don't know enough and I'm not eloquent enough to be preaching to anyone. But here I am. I've been doing a mentorship program with ACC Kids. And earlier in the year, Mark had again mentioned to me about preaching. Again, I'd said no. And later that day, I had one of my mentor sessions. And we were asked what we were doing to step out and grow ourselves. Something that might be a little bit scary. I immediately thought of my conversation with Mark and knew I had to go back to him and say I would give preaching a go. I came to the realisation that it actually isn't about me. It's not about what I think about myself. It is about having confidence in God and trusting Him. Have you ever felt that you couldn't do something, that you didn't have what it takes to do the job? Have you felt a lack of confidence in God? Now, there's a guy in the Bible called Gideon, and he felt just like that. I'm going to read some of Judges 6. So if you want to open your Bibles, you can read along with me. Otherwise, it's also going to be on the screen. But I'm not going to read all of it because it is a long story. So I am going to paraphrase some of it as well. But I would encourage you when you get home to go and look up Judges chapter 6 and 7 and read the story for yourselves. So starting at verse 11. The angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abiza. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say, the Lord brought us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites? Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. But Lord, Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. The Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites, as if you were fighting against one man. Gideon didn't believe he could do what God was asking of him and decided to put God to the test. It says in Judges 6 verse 36, Gideon said to God, If you're truly going to use me to rescue Israel as you promised, prove it to me this way. I will put a wool fleece on the threshing floor tonight. If the fleece is wet with dew in the morning, but the ground is dry, then I will know that you are going to help me rescue Israel as you promised. Sure enough, when Gideon got up the next day, the fleece was wet and the surrounding ground dry. But this wasn't enough for Gideon. He tested God again. And again, God showed Gideon it was him that he wanted to use. So Gideon finally came to terms with the fact that he was going to go into battle and fight the Midianites. But then God came to Gideon and said, you have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands or Israel would boast against me. God instructed Gideon to strip his army back from 32,000 men to 10,000 men. But then God came again to Gideon to say he still had too many men. So God instructed Gideon to take his men to the stream for a drink. He was then to divide his men into two groups. One group for everyone that cupped water in their hands and lapped it like a dog. In the other group, all those who knelt down 
and drank the water from the stream. There were only 300 that drank from their hands. All the others got down on their knees and drank with their mouths from the stream. The Lord told Gideon, with these 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. And so Gideon ended up with just 300 men. The Midianite army, on the other hand, totally outnumbered Gideon and his men. It says in Judges that the Midianite army was like a swarm of locusts. Their camels were like grains of sand on the seashore, too many to count. I reckon poor Gideon was feeling pretty nervous and worried at this point. And if you continue on with the story, it goes to say that one evening, Gideon crept down to the Midianite camp and listened in on what they were saying. He overheard them discussing a dream. I had this dream, and in my dream, a loaf of barley bread came tumbling down into the Midianite camp. It hit a tent, (coughs) turned it over, and knocked it flat. Another guy replied, your dream can only mean one thing. God has given Gideon, son of Joash the Israelite, victory over Midian and all its allies. Gideon heard this, and he understood the dream to mean that he would win the battle against the Midianites. So he bowed down and he worshipped God. Gideon finally had confidence that God was going to do what he said he would. And you know what? Spoiler alert here. Gideon did go on to defeat the Midianites. I think that this is such an incredible story and it's one that inspires and encourages me. I find that I can relate to Gideon and his feeling of not being able to do it, not being confident. But I love the way that God shows once again, he always fulfills his promises and we can trust him no matter what. It's not about how strong or talented or clever we think we are, but we need to be willing and ready to let God work through us. I was listening to a song by Casting Crowns recently called Nobody and these lyrics really struck me. Moses had stage fright. David brought a rock to a sword fight. You picked 12 outsiders nobody would have chosen and you changed the world. We know from the story of Moses that he had this encounter with God, with God physically in front of him, a burning bush, and yet he still questions and doubts God. Moses brings all these excuses saying why God can't use him. I can't speak because I have a stutter. I'm not eloquent. In spite of the fact that God called him out, not because of who Moses was, but because of who God is. David was a young boy. At that stage, he was a nobody. And he went in to fight a giant, not with armour and a sword like you would expect someone to go into battle, but with five stones, a slingshot, and the knowledge and confidence that God was with him. We read in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45, David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David knew where to put his confidence. The disciples were just regular people. They weren't important, they weren't royal, they weren't from high society, yet God chose them to spread his story and share the message of Jesus with everyone. God really can and does use anybody. I thought we might do something a little bit different here and I want you to just take a moment to turn to the person next to you and talk to them about someone you know of their story in the Bible. Maybe it might not even be from the Bible but someone that you know that God has used to do great things. So if you just want to turn to the person next to you for a moment.
You don't have to be someone special, as you already are special. You have been set apart for God to use. Paul wrote in Galatians 3 verse 28, There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. God doesn't see age or gender. He doesn't see how wealthy or poor you are. He just sees you, the incredible creation that he made and he has a plan for. As we can see from Gideon's story, and I'm sure you know from your own life, there are lots of things that can stop us from having confidence in God. Today, I want to look at the things that can help us to have confidence in God. And I want to look at Gideon's story as we do that. So number one is worship. Before Gideon went to fight the Midianites, he bowed down and worshipped. He chose to spend time with God first. This then gave him the confidence he needed to go to battle. When we worship, we are shifting our focus from us or from me, from my circumstances, what is happening around me, to God and who he is. Worship helps us to strengthen our faith and confidence in God. When we worship and focus on God, we are able to let go of the things that are filling us with worry or with fear. And instead, we can feel peace, God's love and strength. Exodus 15 verse 2 says, The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. My mother passed away 10 years ago from cancer. And I can remember so clearly being in church one Sunday morning, standing in the front row in worship. I remember feeling really weary and upset and worried as mum was really sick at this time. But during the worship, I can remember I made a conscious decision to put aside my thoughts and worries and just focus on Jesus. I remember lifting my hands in worship and worshipping with all of my heart. And as I did that, an incredible peace came over me. We'd been praying for a miracle for mum, that God would heal her. And in that moment, while I was worshipping, I felt this confidence that it didn't matter if God chose to heal mum or not. It didn't change the fact that I knew that he could. But I knew that no matter what was going to happen, I had confidence that God would never leave me and he would walk beside me through everything that was yet to come. We need to make sure that like Gideon, we are making time to be with God. Time spent worshipping, praying and listening to him. But it's important that it's not just us doing the talking, but that we're allowing God space to talk to us too. A couple of weeks ago, Pastor Wayne Swift spoke on proximity and challenged us about when was the last time that we made a conscious effort to get before God and really spend time with him. We can have confidence in God when we are close to him. Being in worship helps us to do this. We have a great opportunity right at the moment to be spending time in prayer with the prayer and fasting that we're doing as a church and as a movement. For the next couple of weeks, we're fasting and praying for our nation, our church and our community. If you're not already doing this, I want to challenge you to join us and take part in the prayer and fasting. How can you make sure that you're making space to worship God? Number two is know who God is. I've been doing some reading about knowing God and I came across an article by a man named Rob Timms. He lists seven benefits to knowing God. Now, I'm not going to go through all seven of them now, but I felt that two of them related well to Gideon and his journey. The first one Rob lists is to know God is to have protection. In Judges 6 verse 8, we read that God sent a prophet to the Israelites and reminded them of what God had already done. The prophet said, I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and delivered you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. The prophet was making sure 
that the Israelites and Gideon knew who God was and what he had done for them. We can see that God was their protector. He had brought them out of the land of slavery, protected them as they went through the wilderness and then onto the land he had promised them. The second point Rob list, listed is to know God is to have provision. Gideon saw from what the prophet shared that God had provided. And if you know the story of the Israelites and their journey in the wilderness, you will know that God provided them each morning with quail, a manna to eat and each evening with quail. He didn't let them go hungry. He guided them with a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire during the night. Gideon heard what the prophet said and this helped his confidence in God because if you know what God has already done and you know that God fulfills his promises, you can have confidence that when God declares something, it will be done. In Hebrews 13 verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. God's promises remain and he doesn't change what he has said or promised. And through this knowledge, we can have confidence in him. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, God has made a great many promises and they are all yes because of what Christ has done. For us to have confidence in God, it is so important to know and understand who God is. Number three is know God's voice. We can have confidence when we know and can recognise God's voice. <coughs> Sorry. When you know what God's voice sounds like, you can tell it apart from all of the other voices you hear day to day and have confidence to step out into what God is asking you. Now, I know my children's voices and can recognise them even in a playground full of children. I work at my kids' school and during lunch times, I'm in the playground supervising a young boy. Most days, in amongst the joyful cries and noisy screams of kids playing, I can usually hear a mum ringing out across the playground as Rebecca or Oscar come running down to say hello. Even though there are lots of kids playing and calling out, I know my kids' voices and I can recognise them above the crowd. Gideon could recognise God's voice and knew when it was God asking him to do something. But Gideon knowing and recognising God's voice was a journey that took time. We see in Judges 6 verse 17 that Gideon wanted to make sure it was God's voice he was hearing. It's written, if you're truly going to help me, show me a sign to prove that it is really the Lord speaking to me. You know, it's quite funny. God had sent an angel. Gideon is having a face-to-face -face with the supernatural and yet he still needs more proof. You know what? We do this too. God challenges us through his word, might be through someone close to us, and we immediately give God, who specialises in the impossible, our list of, is this really you? Are you really talking to me? And, but what about all these things? We see that Gideon continued to ask for signs so he would know that it was really God speaking to him. After Gideon tore down the altar to Baal, he again asked God for a sign. And we see in Judges 6, verse 36 to 38, this was when God gave Gideon a sign by making the wool fleece wet with dew and the surrounding ground completely dry. But again, Gideon asked God for another sign. And each time, God proves that it is him speaking. Can you recognise and do you know God's voice? Do you know how God speaks to you? Maybe he speaks to you audibly with his words. He may speak to you through the Bible as you read the word of God. It could be through nature or through other believers. Maybe God speaks to you in worship or through his Holy Spirit. However God speaks to you, you need to be able to recognise his voice and tell it apart from all the other voices in your day. I know for me that God will often talk to me through nature. I used to live up in Launceston and I lived near Cataract Gorge. 
Most days I would go for a walk around the gorge and I would pray as I was walking. I remember one particular day as I'd been praying, I looked up in the sky and there was what looked like made out of the clouds was a face made out of the clouds looking down at me, smiling. And I felt it was God saying that he loved me and it was okay. How does God speak to you? If you know God's voice, this will help you to have confidence when God tells you to do something. If you don't yet know how God speaks to you, ask him to reveal himself to you. Start taking those steps like Gideon to get to know God's voice. Number four is know whose battle it is. Gideon had an army of 32,000 men and his army at this stage was already much smaller than the Midianites. But as we read before, God said to Gideon, you have too many warriors. If I let all of you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me that they save themselves by their own strength. So Gideon has to reduce the size of his army. He releases 22,000 of his men. He is then left with 10,000 men who are willing to fight. And God says there are still too many. He strips Gideon's army back to just 300 men. Now there is a huge difference between 32,000 and 300. But this is what God wanted so he could show that the battle was God's to be won. The whole point of the scenario that Gideon the whole point of the scenario is that Gideon was always outnumbered. He was always outmatched. It seems like a ridiculous strategy to send the majority of your army home and Gideon could have looked at his 300 men compared to the Midianite army. He could have felt totally overwhelmed, but he kept his eyes fixed on God and knew that the battle was God's, not his. In Judges 6 verse 16, God says to Gideon, I will be with you and you will destroy the Midianites as if you are fighting against one man. We need to remember that the battles we face each day are God's battles, not our own. We can overcome them if we rely and have confidence in God and his strength and not strive to overcome them by ourselves. The moment that we start to use our strength and our gifts and what others say about us as a measure of if we are enough or if God will come through, we've missed the point. God has told us so many times that he will be with us and because of him, we can face whatever with the confidence that he is who he says he is and that he is faithful. What situations do you have in your life that seem so hopeless and defeated? Are you waiting on God to come through? God is worthy of all our trust, faith and confidence simply because of who he is. His word is holy, complete and true. God is always there always keeps his promises and no matter what is going on in our life we can have confidence in him today we have looked at the story of Gideon we have seen how he grew in confidence in God we've seen how God can take a nobody and in spite of how we see ourselves in spite of our doubts and unbelief he can and does use us but we need to have confidence in God and allow him to work through us so where to from here I spoke about four ways to help put our confidence in God. Worship, knowing who God is, knowing God's voice, and knowing whose battle it is. If you are struggling with confidence in God, I would like to invite you to maybe look at one of these areas this week. Maybe it's worship, taking that time to just get aside and spend time with God. Maybe it's knowing who God is. To really know God, not just in your head, but in your heart, who he is. That he is our protector and our provider. He is our safe and strong tower that we can run to at any time. Maybe it's knowing God's voice. Do you know how God speaks to you? How can you be sure you know his voice? Do you need to spend time listening this week for God? Maybe it's knowing that the battle belongs to God. We can be so good at relying on our own strengths and capabilities, but we need to remember whose the battle is and that we can only win by putting all our trust and confidence in God. 
Maybe this week you need to hand your battles over to God. We have a God that loves us and never leaves us. A God that we can be confident in. If you've been putting your confidence in places other than God, maybe you might like to talk to someone this week and get prayer about that. You might want to see a life group leader or one of our leaders here at church. But I would encourage you, don't sit in the space you're in. Try and get confidence in God. I'm going to pray now and after that I'd like to invite the band back up. Father God, I just want to thank you for who you are. God, I thank you that you are our protector. I thank you that you are our provider. And God, I thank you that you never leave us, that all we need to do is reach out and you are there. And Lord, I just want to pray this week for anyone that might be feeling a lack in confidence. God, I pray that you would reveal yourself to them and just help them to gain more confidence in you. Lord, I thank you that you are there for everything that we do. And God, I just want to pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.